alaikum and welcome to making a house a home with myself Raghat Bakr and our expert life coach and NLP practitioner Fahima Mohammed, who today will be discussing habits to maintain happiness. Assalamu alaikum Fahima. Alaikum salam. Um, can you tell me um, what you mean by that and how you can have certain habits to maintain happiness and especially at home? Um, yes, it does really start with the individual. Um, even though we're in a family and we have to maintain uh, these routines, it's very difficult to sort of stay in a household for many years and not become like, you know, complacent with the way in which we speak to each other, the way in which we think towards each other. So I think to have the right psychology as an individual is really, really important. Mm -hmm. And today's households you know we we lack so much respect and discipline we lack so much manners because we we're so used to each other and we think sometimes it's okay to just sort of blurt things out or say things in a different tone or use a certain language with you know we might not even necessarily use with our friends and colleagues so why should it be appropriate and you know okay to use within our family members and over time that could you know cause resentment that could cause a lot of like um, sort of distance between, for example, the spouse or even the parents and children. Mm -hmm. So there are definitely habits that we as individuals need to look upon ourselves so that we can create and change the way we look at life, change the way we think about life, change the way we speak and how we feel. And we do certainly conform to certain norms when we're living with each other, which actually is mm -hmm. not necessarily healthy. So yeah. for example, we have, you know, a family, let's just take a case study, for example, where we have a family where they constantly, you know, at each other, you know, with regards to, you know, the, the husband and the wife, you know, not speaking, you know, friendly to, towards each other. And that filters towards, you know, how the children sort of like talk to each other. Mm -hmm. And then there's disruption between even the siblings. And, but that also comes from what they watch within the parents. So having a mindset which is, I'm always going to respect you. I'm always going to speak to you with respect. I'm always going to have regards for you. And even in Islam, you know, within um, relationships, and especially between spouses, they need to be mercy. They need to be forgiveness. There's a lot of complaints within, you know, the households. Oh, they're not pulling their weight, or I'm doing more, or I'm doing less. And these things are really normal, and you think it's okay, and oh yes, now the new way of, oh, if, you know, if a couple argues, that means they love each other. No, it doesn't necessarily work that mm -hmm. way, and it's not really healthy. And you're actually teaching and creating bad habits, and your children are picking up on that, and they're actually going to take it to a level that's probably far beyond what you are doing, which can be really destructive. Okay, so um, what you're saying is in terms of uh, making your ha home happier or your house a happier place to be in is by actually uh, starting with the small little habits and yes. then turning that into an environment. Yeah, I mean, we are so used to the way we are and we don't really want to change and we have to be in our comfort zones a lot of the times and any change normally for any human being is seen to be sort of, you know, really uncomfortable and we don't like it and we really resistant. Mm. So I think as individuals and as humans, the only way to actually maintain happiness is to constantly grow and develop. Mm. Because when you have amount of information, even in Islam, it says knowledge. Knowledge is not just about academic knowledge. It's really about building yourself, building you know, the way in which we think. And self-development is so important with this. And in, in any household, mm. if you're going to have self-development, you're going to be looking at yourself and you're going to be hopefully you know, filtering that and using that as an example as to the way in which you treat your family members. Mm -hmm. That is so important. It's no point you doing charity work. It's no point you going outside and doing so good in your job, for example. And in fact, that also will fail because the home life and the foundation, those are the real, you know, sets for what needs to sort of like, you know, build success. Mm. And there's blessing and there's baraka when you have happiness in your home. If you make your child smile, if your wife or your husband is happy because of you, because of a nice word, you know, even if you, there's nothing you can say to each other, but just smile to each other. Mm. No one even has that in the house anymore. No. We're running away from each other. We wanna go and do our own things because we feel trapped. We feel that we don't get along. We feel that there's no connection, there's no love. But you know, as individuals as well, we need to change our mindset to think that 
we're in this commitment we're in this responsibility and Allah we have promised Allah to have this sort of like commitment we have made a promise to stay in this marriage to be in a household to bring it up and the teachings of the Ahlul Bayt it mm. shows that we have to make our homes happy and that means it's self-sacrifice we need to put others first yeah. we don't do that <coughs> it is funny that you say that because a lot of people um, consider their homes as where they can be themselves kind of thing you can be so, yourself yeah no I mean in terms of like uh, you know I don't want to try and be nice and mm. I, you know I'm, I've come back from work and I'm in a bad mood and I want to let that out or I've got some neg negative energy I want to let that out and the only place I can let it out is at home so you know the, la the last place I want to put an effort in or try hard is at home that's what a lot of people will argue which is obviously that wrong, is true. but how would we change their mindset? That how is a very interesting point, and that mm. is very true. And yes, your home should be where you need to be. But the, hopefully, you know, it'll be like a balance. So if the husband or the wife that's coming home feel that they need to release some stress, mm. you know, with regards to, you know, the pressures outside, that also should be allowed. But what makes it worse is the other person is not allowing it and not having the empathy towards it. Mm. That's when it becomes a problem and an issue. Because instead of listening to the other person and understanding, they're like, well, why are you being like this? Because it should be about me. Mm. You know, it's having a different way of looking at life and each one having their, their own time to let it out. And if one is letting off steam, the other one cannot be the doing the same. There has to be a balance. Mm. That's true. That is That's when, what the, I'm pro when yes. the problem lies, isn't it? Yes. When the husband or the wife is in they a bad both mood be, or stressed yeah. out about something and the other one says what's wrong with you why exactly. are you stressed out you know, there's no mercy that's when it turns yeah. into an, an argument so you know you you definitely should have that peace at home Allah has brought you know marriage mm. and spouses for each other so that there's going to be peace but only if you perform and conform in the right manner and mm. ways so you're going to have empathy for each other. You're going to have love for each other. And it's got to be consistent. And you've got to love that person even when you don't like them. You've got to have to make that. You go to any self-development course in class. They tell you the most, you know, top gurus in, you know, in development. They will tell you that in order to be successful in life, you've got to do things when you don't want. And that's mm. not just in business. <coughs> that's in your home. And the only way you can be successful, whether it's in business or happiness or fulfillment generally, is to do things when you don't want to. So then you do that and you create that habit at home because there's going to be moments and there's going to be plenty of those moments in life where your children are going to annoy you, where your life is going to not go the way that you planned, where, you know, the husband or the wife is not going to be looking or feeling or giving you that love and attention that mm. they did at the beginning. But you still have to perform in the way that you promised. And with that, because you're putting someone else first, because you're still conforming to the responsibilities that you have promised and you're keeping to it. Allah shows mercy on you because you're showing mercy on the person that relies upon you mm. and there's trust that's on you and you're performing so that that comes back to you. It may not be when you want, but that becomes strength within you and that's the feeling that you can actually create in your household and you are not just creating it for yourself. You're actually going to change by you being that way. You might even change the, you know, the responses and the reactions from your partner, for example, mm. and you're going to be showing and teaching your children as well. So all these habits are really important and it starts with the psychology, the way in which you think, you behave and your thoughts. As I started the show when I thought, talked about you know, how your thoughts you know, can manifest in your actions, in your destiny, mm. you know, all of these things make a huge difference. People want to be successful, they want to be fulfilled, they want to be happy, they want to think, I'm going to do it for me. No, <coughs> you do it because you're giving someone else something yeah. first. You make a put that smile on your child's fa face in the morning because you're there to do it. That's when you're going to have the su su success and buttercup when you go to work, yeah. for example. Yeah. We don't realize how these things filter and how yes. these things carry forward in our, in our you know, daily lives. Well, can you go back to that first series mm -hmm. when you're saying about the thought uh, turns into an action, the action yeah. turns into a habit? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, like, you know, we have... Um, we don't realize how powerful our mind is mm. and studying the mind and neuroscientists as well you know I, I do a lot of research on that and it does help with coaching mm. um, to be honest the way in which we think does you know conform with the our actions mm. and to, to be honest we don't we might think it's conscious subconscious whatever it may be unconsciously but our mind is very very powerful mm. and our religion does give us that way of you know constantly encouraging us to study and to learn and seek knowledge because 
it's all in the mind and if we're going to live in the backward way of thinking or in a cultural way of thinking it's stopping us from growing mm. so our mind needs to grow in order for you to change your life you need to change your ways in order for you to make have successes you need to obviously you know build yourself and the only way you're going to do that is to develop yourself mm. and develop yourself in ways in how you think and understanding the way in which the world works right now <coughs> building those you know those gaps and there's you know building those bridges and bringing those gaps closer within generations within you know different sort of cultures and societies and in your own home especially because there's different generations there there's the grandparents there's the parents there's the children there's different even intermarriages with interfaith with regards to different cultures so we need to understand and learn about that and you know and help each other in that way and i think that you know with children especially they learn a lot by your actions and by what they see more than what you say so happiness is something that you know yes as individuals we all look at happiness differently but i think real happiness is you giving and you growing yeah, well, well, you mentioned about children learning from what our actions more than anything else. Um, well, you know, there's a lot of studies that have uh, shown that yes. to be true, that the first way of a child learning is through your actions, Absolutely. through your habits. They copy. They're just looking yeah. at what you're doing and they will copy exactly the way you mm -hmm. behave. So no matter how much you tell them something is right and wrong, if you're not acting that way, it, it won't mean anything really. Yeah, I mean, it's really down to the individual. It's really, it's challenging being in a, a family home, in a mm. family unit, where there's different personalities, there's different developmental stages, and each one is going through their own journeys, and we don't necessarily communicate this. So, you know, and sometimes we just have expectations as that, oh, they should know. They know me, we've been married for years, or we've lived together, but with, there's no communication and there's no sort of interaction about how each other feels, about what each other wants, and it needs to be constant because it changes over time. So um, when we have that relationship with each other and we build it, and even if we lose those things, we don't just give up. You know, never, ever give up in life. If you give up on your own family, how are you going to ever succeed in life generally? Mm. You know, like I mentioned a, a few weeks back, you know, people will only want to work with you if you've got a strong household, if you've got and maintain good relationships within your family members, even when you don't like them, even when there's challenging, you know, characters in there and you can still maintain and still get along. That builds strength. That builds so much um, sort of character and you know I think it's it's really important because you bring something to the table which is not normal mm. and to be able to master that then you can master anything outside your home and that's when when you go to development courses and they talk about these things even outside religion where even our religion states it but you know it talks about you know having to do things when you don't want to do it mm. having to you know and that's when you can face a challenge when it comes to you so when you feel like you don't really love your wife or there's no connection or there's no sort of real, you know, sort of um, feeling between you, you've got to push and work towards that because mm. it was, was <coughs> it was, you know, it was there. And there's so many different areas and, you know, places that you can turn to like therapy or counseling that you can make it work. And sometimes you can actually build something that is even stronger than before. Mm. Not to say that if things go wrong, you've got to up and leave and start fresh again. <laughs> and most of the time you end up not even doing that no. and it's actually worse so you know invest in your family that's your legacy that's actually your future that's your success and that's your happiness you know the your home is your foundation your home is your you know your growth for the future and those branches and those leaves that will come from it that's your actual inspiration for the future people want to be successful and happy you look at your home you build your home and that is the people that are in it. Don't think I'm going to go out there and make money and be successful in a company or, you know, have a completely lovely idea and it's going to make me millions. That's why those people that actually just do that by themselves, they end up depressed, they end up suicidal, they end up with anxiousness because they still think I've made all this money, I've done all of these things, I've got the job, I've got the profession, but I'm still not happy. Now what? Yeah. Now what? Because yeah. your home is where you need to build that happiness yes. and invest in yourself by learning these techniques by having these within you don't just say i'm empathetic mm. be empathetic yeah you know and you just mentioned investing yourself 
isn't the best investment when you invest in your children that's like you know you actually see your investment you see yeah, what you put but in but then grow. not but everyone has the tools for this not everyone has the strategies for this you go to life coaches they tell you how to become a coaching parent mm. you go to therapy you go to classes you have to invest in yourself to create First. that knowledge mm. to open up that space of exploring mm. because we don't have all the information all the time or sometimes we need reminding of whatever <coughs> we know or what we've learned when we were younger so as adults we think that we've come to an age and we have wisdom but no the wisdom is knowing that there's still more to learn mm. there's always room for improvement and then you bring that forward to your family and you experiment and you explore with them and you say that, you know, I've learned this from my course, I've done this. Mm. Now let me be that. Let me show it. And who else better to show it with to show all that kindness, that unconditional love, whatever you say that you've got, compassion, mm. whatever it may be. Do that with your own family members. Be that person and you will see the fruits of that grow into something even cr better than you could ever create for yourself. Okay. Well, uh, the title of today's discussion was Habits of Maintaining Happiness. Um, so what things can we do because as we mentioned earlier I was saying that sometimes you come home and you've got a lot of stress or you're just not not in the best of moods what habits can you get into as a couple or as a family mm -hmm. to put yourself in in a better mood or to get out of that dark cloud that you're in okay well it's all about changing your state of mind and it's really powerful in um, I work with clients one-on-one -on -one with you know changing their states of mind mm. instantly mm. so you know NLP does that so when you have or even just saying things like um, basically there's always a positive alternative to any situation mm. so when you have these sort of like um, um, these ways of thinking you know in, in NLP we have presuppositions so there's no such thing as you know failure there's feedback for example so when you're talking to your child, for example, and they come back and they haven't done anything, it's not about telling them that you've done wrong and you've done badly in your exam. It's like, what have you learned from it? Mm. And if you have an argument with your, or you, you have a, a, a strong feeling which is negative towards your, your spouse, for example, because they've done something or they haven't done something, then it's about understanding, for example. Mm. So it's about switching that state of mind in an instant. And that only can come from you pausing and realizing and not reacting and not responding and when you do respond when you do react it's got to be something where you know that you would like to be spoken to as well you know you don't just give it to them because you've got a one up on them because they haven't done something so you call them out constantly because that is complaining instead of complaining be content mm. you know these sort of things so positive alternative instead of complaining be content instead of you know moaning show empathy, show understanding. All of these things are so basic. Yes, they are like, it's so obvious, it's so cliche. <coughs> but when you practice it, when you really practice it and it yeah. becomes a habit, you change your ways. It's and you want to change other people, you change yourself, yeah. and that will create the changes in your household. And that is so basic and that's so few. Yeah. But when you sit in a session with me, we can go through it a lot deeper, mm. and we can do things in a lot more, you know, towards your you know your way of living and it will be according to the way you do things and how you can open up to, you know to what how it works in your household because there are some really deep issues in every household and everyone's running away from it and everyone thinking that marriage is a trap or we can just move on and we can just do things and we can leave our families as long as we're providing financially or we come once in a while that's family no you don't realize the impact of family you don't know the blessing of family you mm. don't know the buttercup of family mm. if you really just think of it in that way you know you need to build your mind you need to understand what it means to be in a family that's why this show I have created the concepts and the titles because it is so important that our society is breaking down because the foundations are not being met and the foundations need to be known they the basic knowledge needs to be adhered to they need to practice in order mm. for us to move forward in life. Yeah, and subhanAllah, you know, we, we're saying about being content and that's the ultimate happiness, really. Of course. It's actually, it's, it's very easy to be content uh, um, to a certain extent because you just have to look at what you do have and the blessings that you do have rather than look at the things that you don't have, which mm -hmm. a lot of people have fallen into that habit yes. of looking at what they don't have oh, you know what, if I have this, then I'll be happy. Or if I get this, I'll be happy. Or this person has that, that's why they're happy. And you, you, you forget to look at what you've got, and that's 
what actually yeah. is making it's you ha it can make you yeah. happy. Well, it's and learning to focus we forget, your mind. We forget yep. to do that, and that's the simplest habit that we Absolutely. can do. Absolutely, yeah. And that will give us ultimate content and ultimate happiness, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, it's really about focusing your mind. Mm. There's three things we have control over, and maybe I've mentioned this before, but mm. I will say it again. It's what the th three things that you have control over. One is what you focus on. So if you're going to focus on a negative, it's going to always be negative and it's going to elevate. Mm. So when you have a situation in the house and you want to complain, you want to moan, and you want to play the victim and you want to feel like as if you know people and have all yeah, these expectations, very easy. that is very simple to do. But you can focus on that if you want or you can focus on the alternative positive. You can focus on being content. You can focus on being empathetic mm. and understanding, for example. Mm. Showing unconditional love in a family is so vital. You know, because when you don't want to be there, you still got to be there for your family. Mm. When you don't like them, you still got to show love to your children and even to your wife and your husband. Mm. That's what makes you a master of your own, you know, your own state is to actually push through those barriers. And then secondly is focusing on what meaning you give to things. We always change the meanings and we mm. can change it. It can mean nothing or it can mean something. So basically you know what does something mean to you and where does that come from so we mm. understand you know if they're tired and if they don't want to go out does that mean they don't actually feel love for us and they don't actually or does it mean they're just really tired mm. <laughs> you know yeah. so it's all these things that we yeah. do and the other thing the other focus is one of the control we have is what do we do when we are faced with a challenge and the thing is a lot of us crack and break a lot of us fall a lot of us run and we give up Mm. A lot of us think we can get something better outside. Mm -hmm. It not, doesn't work that way. You know, we are blessed. Allah has put us in a household, in a family, and we need to work with it. And we have to do whatever it takes. So when, if, if it ever comes to a stage where you walk away, you've done everything. So you know, no matter what, I have done for everything because I'm going to be answered for that. Mm. You know, ultimately, we are going to be accountable. So we need to take this seriously. Don't just think, think that, you know, building houses is the same as building a home. Mm. It's not. When you have that home, you treasure it. It is a real treasure. It's everything. It's everything. Yeah. And if, you can't, if you can't take care of it, if you can't nourish it, nurture Get it, help. Then there must be something wrong, possibly with you first. And then yes. if not with you, then try and, try and see what, what is wrong and try and fix it yes. rather than run, run away. Sometimes. No, never give up. Never give up. That's mm. an investment, mm. a complete investment. Thank you so much, Fahima. And I hope all the viewers have uh, understood uh, about habits of, uh, of actually creating happi happiness within the home and um, how, how easy it is just to look at the, the positives and try to forget about the negatives. And... Um, we're going to have a short break now, inshallah. And after the break, we'll be taking some of your questions. Uh, and Fahim, inshallah, will be able to answer them. And we'll be back soon. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the second part of our show of Making a House a Home. And we're back with some of your questions. Salam Fahima. Alaikum salam. Okay, so my first question is from Fatima. And she says, what steps can one take if they feel that there is no emotional connection with their family members at home? I mean, that's a very interesting question because I'm... And then at the end of the day, what is her idea of emotional connection? Mm. You know, if I was sat with my client with that, because everyone has a different idea, but I will just sort of make it up so that hopefully, you know, I can give some sort of different sort of ideas and strategies. Emotions are very, you know, up and down. And if you want emotional connection, then, you know, it starts by sharing. So, you know, to be open. And a lot of people, they think they have an emotional connection. And that could be done because, you know, they do the same things, they eat the same way, they have the same routine. But it's, it's about sharing things and it doesn't have to be similar. So people sort of build themselves apart even in families because they're not actually engaging in it and liking in doing the same activities, for example. Mm. So when you want to build emotional you know, connection, it's about, you know, just trying to learn about the other person 
and trying to do what they like to do and invite yourself to do what they want and that could build mm. some sort of like you know emotional connection because you're actually taking the time out to do something for somebody else so you're saying that like an activity maybe mm. so you're saying that an emotional connection starts off with understanding one another first yes possibly having something in common and then you could take it from there that's what I'm saying. You don't need to have something in common. Mm. A lot of people, they go apart because they feel there's no common ground. Mm -hmm. There doesn't need to be a common ground. We don't mm. all have to like the same things at the same time. And a lot of relationships break because they all feel they have to be similar and mm. like and want and do. But it's about liking what the other person wants, giving yourself up. Again, it's not about being self-centered. Mm -hmm. It's not about doing what you want and wanting the other person to do what you like. It should be the other way around. Mm -hmm. And eventually it will come back to you where they'll be doing what you want because you've shown that you're doing what they want. And then, you know, you emotional connection is about if you love that person and if you feel for that person in whichever form, it, whichever stage, then you'll be willing to do that and you'll be willing to take those steps. And that's why it's easy for you to have, you know, sort of like um, where you'd have to still support them and still stand by them even when you don't like them and you don't agree with their opinions or their mm -hmm. ways, is that's when the unconditional love comes in because you have that you know, attachment or that emotion towards that person. You want emotional connection, that means you feel something for them. Mm. So share it and there's many ways of sharing it. And I think also when you um, just support people even when they least expect it because everyone wants to do things their way mm. so it's about you know giving up you know giving up yourself for somebody else we all have a blueprint and a story of an image of how things should be we shouldn't have that we should just you know go with what's there and what's given for us and make it work especially within our families okay um, I have a question from Ghadir and she asks, what can one do if they feel that their home is not peaceful and a comfortable environment? Um, again, we want to know what do they mean by peaceful and what's causing it not to be peaceful mm -hmm. and comfortable as well. Everyone has a different view and image and perspective on what their comforts may be. So I just know that, you know, to create a habit in, in our households, it starts with our practice and it practice practice of Islam for example you know having Quran in the background every morning mm. have it a routine you don't realize the blessings there are certain surahs even that you know brings about blessing barakah and happiness in the home mm. if you listen to surah ba Baqarah for example and there's so many others you know if every morning we had five minutes that we would listen mm. you know in the background instead of having the TV on you have that in the background while you're preparing breakfast mm. while the kids are eating and if that's a routine you don't realize that you know it could be so enlightening it can actually change someone's mood because that is being played in the back in the back you know in the background mm. so you know these things you know these habits are n psychological yes but the practice of Islam is the main thing and then when you have the practice of Islam not just just doing the five times salah but in between your salah how you treat people how you talk and the other extras that you do on top of your salah where you actually gonna be listening to Quran more where you're gonna be actually avoiding even haram in the house like maybe listening to songs for example mm. you know the angels don't visit so, you know, that can maybe Ruin cause the atmosphere. more exactly, tension. It mm. can, you know, accelerate things, which will probably not necessarily accelerate if, for example, you have something peaceful, you know. So these things are really important to create comfort because you don't need to know, what comfort do I need? People say, well, it's comforting to listen to classical music. Fair enough, that can be for certain times. But at the end of the day, what is your ultimate reason and meaning mm. and purpose for being here? And if you want to create real peace, real solace in your household then these are the things that you need to do and you know making a habit of reading a page of Quran every day mm. reading Surah Yasin you know listening to Quran as much as you can when you walk out the door when you entering the house say Bismillah say Assalamu Alaikum you know say you know a surah which is even short before you enter so that even that pressure from outside does not enter in with you mm. and when you leaving you leaving with peace and you're coming with peace all these little habits are so important and you know our religion has so much of that but we just don't practice it and we forget mm. and if you make that as a habit it doesn't mean it's in your household it's with every step that you take wherever you go mm. you'll have that peace of course and come and comfort yeah. inshallah 
Um, I have a question from Ali and he says, how can one approach family members after having constant arguments and after the arguments diffuse, how do you diffuse that situation? You know, again, like I said, it's about giving up. A lot of us, we have egos and we want to be right and we want to say things because it's our point of view. Mm. But when someone even hurts you, we can hurt them back or we have a choice to understand why they're behaving and being in that way. So we need to be like people of real sort of like empathy where we have to understand why did they come to that point where there has to be an argument, what created it. And listen, listen with understanding and meaning, not listening to sort of sort of counteract or confront. Mm. You know, a lot of the times we want to counter people because we want to come across as the, the one with the loudest voice and the one with the best way of saying it so that, you know, we push mm. them, the other person the last down word kind of and thing. having the last word. Mm. So, when, yes, we're going to have disagreements, we're going to have arguments, there's going to be differences of opinions, even if a family has been brought up with the same values and beliefs, we have a different way of looking at it and taking it upon ourselves mm. through our own personal, uh, you know, experiences, what we face in our days, even if we're going to school, we have different ways of, you know, experiencing things and we bring that back and we look at things differently. So we need to have understanding of, you know, how the other person thinks. And yes, it's it's difficult, you know, you're not a psychologist, but you know, you have family meetings, you air things out, you give each one a chance to speak. You know, we need to come into the, today's day, you know, and not just do things the old way. Even in this, you know, Imam Ali alayhi salam narrates, you know, don't raise your kids as you were raised. You know, be more open with your children. Mm. You know, let them have the voice. You know, let them, let you know, make yourself hear them. You know, make them be part of that family in your decision making, in whatever it is that you're doing and saying and speaking instead of just dictating to them. And that could bring that connection. That could even diffuse arguments because each one has a say. I mean, I'm only talking generally because I'm not sure the exact scenario of arguments mm -hmm. or whatever. I'm just making it very general. Obviously, there'll be different, you know, habits that we need to create and different ways of dealing with it. But I'm just making it very general, you know, in my mind as to what it could be. So, um, but I think it's a lot about, you know, being understanding towards the other person. And really, instead of taking things personal, step outside yourself and analyze it from a different point of view. Mm. And I think that could bring any sort of argument and any sort of like, you know, disagreement to a halt where you know even the other person might say well actually she's or he's actually listening to me mm. and when they're being heard when they're being understood even if it's not being agreed that alone brings that tone to a different level where they can actually be maybe conversation and they can actually be better conversations in the future because you have to have respect and i think a lot of households they lose respect for one another because they're so familiar with each other mm -hmm. but you have to constantly remind yourself there's respect for the older, there's respect for the younger, there's respect for each other as partners, there's respect for each other, you know, we, each of us have our rights. You know, children have their rights, wives, husbands, male, female, we need to remember that. And we need to go over that knowledge, we need to build it, and we need to instill it in our habits, so that when we are faced with these challenges of arguments, of, you know, sort of, I don't know, emotional, sort of, you know, lack of emotions, or whatever it may be, that all of these things are in put in place. Am I being respectful? Am I being understanding? Am I being empathetic? Am I actually listening? You know, mm. all of these things, am I showing compassion? What is compassion to me? To somebody else, it could mean something totally different. Mm. So you need to seek that sort of knowledge and advice, go outside and develop yourself so that you have these insights that you can explore and you can relay and relate to the rest of your family members. Mm. Thank you so much, Fahima. Um, I just wanted to pick up something you said in answering this question. You mentioned something about family meetings. Mm -hmm. And I'm a strong believer in actually having family meetings. And I just feel like it's actually very, very healthy yes, for is. a family to sit around a table and have that meeting, um, especially in situations like this, um, where everyone can air out um, their uh, opinions, um, what they feel about certain situations, what they feel about one another. Um, and it's in an environment which is a safe environment yes, kind of thing. So yes. you can say uh, what, you, what you feel without being um, judged or attacked. Um, I think a lot of families should um, 
That's a very good habit to create. Take, take that as a habit yeah. and creating that maybe even once a month. I think it needs it to, to be regular. every week or anything. No, I totally but, agree. But you know, every now and then, I think it's very, very yeah. healthy for a family to sit together and and have that family meeting. And because you just mentioned that. And yeah. It's, it's true and the thing is like you just also said mm. which I picked up on you know having it regular because mm. you know things change and when things are not spoken about even if it means husband and wife having it between themselves and mm. then going and including the children at a later stage so they're on the same team and on yeah. the same page because that's when the respect will be there because yeah. you don't want to be arguing or having differences of opinions exactly. in front of your children because they're going to be confused yeah. if you are confused in that way. Yeah. So and when it's called a family meeting, so it's under that um, umbrella of yeah. a family meeting. So like I said earlier, like you're in a safe kind of space. Yes. So when you tell your husband something or your husband tells the wife something, um, the, uh, the, uh, the opposite our party wouldn't feel attacked or shouldn't yes. feel attacked. It's just your opinion and how you feel yeah and, you're and i think that's values. a very healthy yeah. place to be in definitely yeah. and you know in that way you're creating values and beliefs within your household system mm. you know and and that can be shared with your children mm. but it has to be consistent it has to be constant whether like you said every fortnight every month because things are happening all the time mm -hmm. things are changing mm -hmm. the children are developing you're going through your own experiences so that there could be an understanding that oh but you know I had a meeting that day so that's why I couldn't do it and you know or I couldn't make your appointment and I couldn't come to your football game mm. and it's not going to be embedded in that child that oh my my mom and dad or they don't care yeah. about me because you know we create these stories in our minds because we're not actually being told we're not actually being explained why yeah, yeah. and you know these and then it, it, it sort of like escalates and it creates even bigger problems yeah so these are very healthy habits to have in the household inshallah inshallah I mean, but that's the aim of uh, of the show is to yeah implant healthier habits definitely in in everyone's home inshallah so i have one last question from Hassan, and he asks what can one do if they feel that they can anticipate an argument about to start how do they avoid that okay um well physically you can remove those two people from the same room yeah <laughs> but at the same time in a, on a serious note um if you have that connection with them, then you know you, you talk to them separately, and and maybe talk also to each other on the other side of things. Like you know, to say, well, actually, I've spoken to that person, and this is what it really is, and you know, and then do the the same. So you sort of diffusing any fire that's mm. you know being created, mm. so that you know you can be the mediator for that. If say you have like you know siblings and there's an argument and you know we might look at it as as something trivial but when you get older those arguments between siblings especially when they're older can be very very like you know destructive mm. and they can be very serious and they can cause a lot of like rift for the rest of the family and it can be very awkward in a lot of you know occasions. So when you know that things are building up when you know that there's something there you can intervene and you can diffuse and you can put the fire out. You know, by understanding each person's point of view, by actually, you know, talking to each other and then bringing them together and you actually being present so that there is someone there who is going to be fair. Because sometimes when two people are very heated and they come together, it's all about them trying to just put their point across. Mm -hmm. But then you, if you have the skill of saying, well, I can understand where she's coming from. Can you see that? You know, like being the coach, for example, mm. you know, and in a coaching environment, when I do relationship coaching and I do couples coaching, it is, it can be where it's two people, you know, that have these sort of conflicts. And, you know, I will sit there and I will give them a chance to speak and also give them a chance to reflect what the other person is saying mm -hmm. so that they actually understand it because we give ourselves that own way of thinking and meaning, which is totally wrong. And it just escalates what we're feeling inside when it should actually be diffusing it. So when I do couples coaching, it's very important that the other person listens and reflects what the other person's saying so that they have an understanding. And when you're in that process of reflecting what the other person is saying, even if it's like, she said this to me, and then the other person's like, yeah, um, she's saying that I said that to her. That few seconds of actually repeating what the other person has said makes them think mm. makes them reflect makes them go back and actually think actually i did say it like that i mm. did mean it like that i didn't actually mean it like that but it that's actually how came it across sounded. and that's how mm. it sounded i can understand where she's coming from so i think in this sort of situation if you have the skill or mm. you gain the skills of being in a coaching sort of situation where you can actually you know mediate in that very you know clever technique and have a strategy 
then it can be so amazing and powerful that you could diffuse things and you can make people love each other again and be together again, you know, and think that actually what we do normally is just have our own feelings, we keep it within ourselves, we want to stay away from families and for years and months we can go th through this and it's so damaging and it's so sad, especially when there's occasions and there's children involved and they don't get to see each other for so long mm. and it, it's really a sad situation mm. when it can really be diffused and people do need to sit down and talk people right. need to step down from even their egos people mm. need to also take responsibility for other people being that way because of how they are mm -hmm. so okay. there's a lot of there's a lot of you know tools that i have in these sort of individual cases and i hope that i've mm. highlighted a few that people can take it upon themselves to educate, learn, develop, and grow so that they can be better, not just for themselves, but especially to the rest of their family members. Okay, thank you so much, Fahima. Um, we're coming towards the end of the show, unfortunately, so we can't answer any more questions for today. But inshallah, the questions that we have answered have been helpful to everyone watching. And once again, Fahima, thank you so much for being You're here. Welcome. And it's been a pleasure uh, listening to you and uh, gaining so much, so much knowledge. Uh, alhamdulillah, shukran that we have uh, someone like You're you on, on this channel. Um, and we're coming towards the end of the, the show for today. And inshallah, we'll be back again with some more topics with Fahima. If you've been affected by the following topics raised in this episode, please contact your local GP or Fahima Muhammad on coachfm1 at hotmail.com.